guys and welcome back to another episode of a flinch squad circuit we are here in the moon series we're going into week six in today's episode with some incredible games from our players if you've missed any of the weeks so far and you'd like to see the progress of the players up to now you can go back up here i'll link a card for you lovely people you can check all the games out that we've had so far in the circuit and see who's been playing what and who's been ripping through the circuit so far. It's been really exciting and like I keep saying it's just a pleasure to cover these games and really showcase these guys because they're doing such an incredible job and just we've not even hit halfway through this circuit yet and we've got a lot of games to go so lots of excitement to come. Just a reminder as well if you enjoy this sort of content make sure to drop a like on the video just down below. Make sure you do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of these episodes when they do come out and also our video EGC 2019 Daily Battle Series, as well as our guides and other things like that. And I'm already working on Ultra Series guides and content, so if you like that sort of stuff, make sure you do subscribe so you don't miss any of those when they come out. But on to more pressing matters, on to the Flinch Squad circuit, because that's why we're here today. So without further ado, let's take a quick look at the pairings for week six. So we've got pairings here on your screen right now. We've got Luigi versus Yorine, Amaji versus Alex, Johnny versus Stu, Shade versus versus Krim, Xenophis Deus versus Will, Pinko versus Worm's Eye, Bevan versus Purple, and Pokemati versus Hectic. Some incredible games for us going into this week, and we are going to kick off right now with Urine versus Luigi. So without further ado, let's get into it, guys. So we are going into game one of this episode today, and it's going to be Urine on your top of the screen and Luigi on the bottom. Luigi leading off with Landorus and Tapu Fini, and Urine leading off with Tapu Fini Xerneas. We're going to see the Intimidate side from the landers to both special attacking targets not gonna matter too much and the missy terrain setup Xerneas switching out straight away for Urine as the Incineroar now hitting the field, cycling that Intimidate all important onto that Landorus on Luigi's side of the field, but retreating again and Incineroar gonna match Urine's side of the field now with that Incineroar coming in, getting the Intimidate onto Urine's Incineroar. Gonna see a Nature's Madness come out from Urine's Tapu Fini and a light screen set up from Luigi's Tapu Fini, bolstering those defenses going into the rest of the game. As we see Urine match that with a light screen of his own and a Nature's Madness coming out from Luigi's Tapu Fini into the opposing Tapu Fini. So Pretty even so far as a U-turn comes out from the Incineroar on your own side of the field. Going to get that Groudon onto the field now. So putting on a lot of pressure with bringing the sun as well as we see U-turn come out from Incineroar on Luigi's side. Going to reposition and that Lander is going to come back in. Get an Intimidate onto that Groudon. And Lord's attack stat by one stage. Tap of Finney not worried about that too much. But it does switch out now as Incineroar comes back onto the field for your own. Cycling that Intimidate once again. Intimidate cycling so important in these matches because of these big physical powerhouses. Gonna see Tapu Fini now retreat for Luigi. Incineroar gonna come back onto the field again and a Tectonic Rage coming out for Luigi. It's gonna be that Landorus. Which slot is it gonna be into? If it is into the what was the Tapu Fini in that Incineroar, can it hang on at minus one or is it gonna be enough to take down the Incineroar? It's not. It hangs on with a barely and a tiny amount of HP. Groudon now on your side of the field gonna launch a Tectonic Rage back. These players are going toe to toe with each other every turn. Back into that Incineroar now. Is this an it is minus two and not quite enough Incineroar hanging on for Luigi proccing that figgy berry and taking it back up to 50% health so switching out now wanting to preserve it for later on as we see a fake up from the opposing Incineroar on your own side of the field Sword Dance coming out from the Landorus as Tapu Fini now hits the field and Groudon matching again with that Sword Dance keeping toe to toe getting that attack boost and undoing those Intimidate drops Landorus now Luigi's side going for that Sword Dance again as a, sword, a Stone Edge comes out from the Groudon misses the Landorus unfortunately Flare Blitz doubling into that slot, taking it down to about 50% health and the Incineroar now going down to recall damage. Light screen fading on Luigi's side of the field as the Xerneas now in the field for Yorine, that fairy aura activating and becoming a big threat because that light screen not in effect now. I'm going to see a moon blast it is into that Landorus slot and Groudon going for that precipice blades. If it hits, you've got to think it does take the Finny down and a Finny actually hangs on, procs the wiki berry, gets the light screen up. That is huge for Luigi. Big, big, big turn there as the light screen does now fade on your side of the field. We're going to see a Geomancy now from this Zerni is going to proc its ability, special attack, special defense and speed and become a huge threat going into these next turns. But you've got to think that Landorus on Luigi's side of the field is super threatening with those Sword Sands boosts. Going to take down the Groudon with an Earthquake, take down the Tapu Fini and chunk that Xerneas. But Xerneas still in a not a bad position going into this next turn. Has got to worry about the fake out from this Incineroar coming onto the field for Luigi. It's going to have fake out support, really disruptive and especially with that Earthquake from the Landorus now being 
being very pressure heavy. So we're going to see a protect from the Xerneas now or avoid that fake out damage. You're going to see a rock slide from the Landers. Is it enough to get the Tapu Fini? It is enough to take that down now. You're only left with that Xerneas on the field. Can it take anything down with it? Oh, hanging on that light screen coming in so clutch there. And the Landers and the Incinero are both surviving and Luigi taking game one. So the big, big win there for Luigi. And it was such a slog fest there going toe to toe. Both players keeping up with each other every step of the way in that one and Luigi just coming out on top so we're going to go on to game two here Incineroar Xerneas leading out for Yura and the Incineroar and Tepifini leading out for Luigi. Luigi not really utilizing these restricted Pokemon yet so it'll be interesting to see them come out in this game. Both players going to just trade fake outs this turn and nothing going to happen here as we see Yura in turn two switch out that Xerneas for the Tepifini now and the light screen set up on Luigi's side of the field again bolstering and showing how important that was in game one for just being able to clean up right at the end. Incineroar going to switch out for Yoran with that U-turn, bring the Xerneas back onto the field as we see a U-turn from Luigi's Incineroar into that switched Xerneas and proc the Xerneas on Luigi's side of the field now, which is a big, big threat for Yoran to deal with, making sure that he's got checks, he's going to switch out his Xerneas, save it for later, bring that Incineroar in with that fake out pressure going into the next turn. As we see Luigi do exactly the same, bring his Incineroar back onto the field now and put the pressure right back on his side of the field. Moonblast coming out from Luigi, not opting for that Geomancy this turn as a light screen comes out for Urine, protecting his side of the field and bolstering those special defenses. Fake out now from Urine's Incineroar into that Incineroar on Luigi's side of the field, stopping that from turning Moonblast into the Incineroar and a Nature's Madness from the Tapu Fini into the Xerneas, taking it down to 50% health. We're going to see the Geomancy now bust out from Luigi, bust a move, Xerneas boosting that special attack, special defense, and speed by two stat points. And it becomes super threatening. So Urine in a tight spot after this turn if he can't really manage this. We're going to see a U-turn from the opposing Incineroar into the Incineroar on Luigi's side of the field and Groudon now make an appearance and bring that Sun along with it. What is Luigi's Incineroar going to do? Just match suit and go for another U-turn and go back and give Luigi some positioning as he brings in the Landorus with that Intimidate cycle onto the Groudon more important than anything else. You've got to remember that this Xerneas is still Geomancy boost. is still very threatening. Incineroar going to come back in straight away for that Landorus on Luigi's side of the field as a Moonblast comes out into the Tabu Fini. It's not quite enough to pick up the knockout. That light screen coming in huge for Urine as it does survive procs that berry and a haze coming out. Gonna get rid of all of those Intimidate drops and the Geomancy boost and gives this ground on neutral attack again, getting rid of those Intimidate drops. Gonna throw out a big Tectonic Rage if it's in the Xerneas, which it is. Is it gonna be enough? It surely is gonna be enough to take it down from the health that it was at and removing that threat straight away from the field as the light screen now out of the field. We're going to see Groudon now switch out for Urine. Incineroar hit the field again, get that all important Intimidate. As we've seen so far in this match, how important these Intimidate cycles are. As we see the Lander is now throwing out its own Tectonic Rage. Which slot is it going to be into? You've got to imagine it's into that supporting Tapu Fini slot, which it is. Going to take that support option down for Urine, and it is going to be enough to take it down, even minus one. As we see the U turn from Luigi's Incineroar onto the opposing Incineroar. Going to switch out, bring this Tapu Fini back in for Luigi and get that Misty Terrain onto the field and have that support network right in place. We're going to see the Xerneas now for Yorion come out and we are in the last stage of this match. Who's going to take it because it's so tight going into these last few turns. We're going to see the Incineroar come back in for the Tapu Fini as a fake out comes out into that slot from Yorion's Incineroar. We're going to see a Moonblast as well doubling in trying to get rid of that Tapu Fini as a Sword Stance comes out from the Landorus now putting itself in a pole position on plus one. We're going to see the Tapu Fini switch straight back in for Luigi as the Xerneas does protect now. We're going to see a Rock Slide come out from this Landorus and it is going to be hitting that Incineroar, taking it down and enough there. So Luigi still in this game and still able to come back with this, this ground on, putting on a lot of pressure, getting rid of that Intimidate now. It's got no threat of being reduced anymore. We're going to see a Geomancy come out from the Xerneas now on Yuri's, your own side of the field. Going to boost again like we saw Luigi do earlier. That special attack, special defense and speed and become a big threat going into the next turn. We are going to see the Landorus go for another Sword Stance here. Put itself onto plus three, which is crazy. Stone Edge going to do some nice damage to that Landorus and the light screen set up from this type 
type of Finny, which is hindering the ability of this Xerneas so much. We're going to see a Moonblast into this type of Finny now from the Xerneas, doing about half health with the Precipice Blades coming out from the Groudon. Is it enough this time to get the type of Finny again hanging on to HP, which is crazy, proccing that Wiki Berry and allowing the Haze, but at the same time, getting rid of the Geomancy boosts, you get rid of the Sword Sands boosts on your own land risk. So, self sacrificing there for Luigi and getting rid of those Geomancy boosts might be the thing that either throws the battle his way or not. We're going to see a Moonblast from the Xerneas into the Incineroar. Not enough to take it down behind that light screen, but proccing the berry as a Stone Edge doubles into that slot. Again, just hanging on after that minus one with the Nature's Madness now coming into the Xerneas on your side of the field from Luigi's. Taking it down to below 50% health. Fake out into the ground on Moonblast into the Tapu Fini. Taking that special attack drop again as another Nature's Madness, but this time into the ground on, on your own side of the field. As we see the Incineroar now cycle out and the Landorus hit the field once again, cycling those Intimidates. What are we going to see the Xerneas do? It is going to go for a Dazzling Gleam. Get, oh, it's not quite enough to get rid of that Tapu Fini as the Groudon goes for a Sword Stance, keeping up the pressure here on your own side of the field. We're going to see a Heal Pulse into that Landorus now and the light screen now fade as the Landorus does go for that Protect. Xerneas going for another Dazzling Gleam. Is it going to be enough this time to get rid of the Tapu Fini? You've got to think it is. So not giving that light screen support anymore as another Stone Edge comes out for the Groudon into that Protect. We're going to see Intimidate come onto the field now with Incineroar. Does this give the Landorus room to set up a Sword Stance maybe? Going to be into that Xerneas. We're going to see the Sword Stance from the Landorus now setting its plus two up. Stone Edge into that slot. You've got to think though that it is probably out of range for the Xerneas to take it down. We're going to see a double protect now from Groudon and the Xerneas. An Earthquake coming out from the Landorus. Going to be taking down the Incineroar which is a little bit unfortunate from Luigi's side of the field and he is left with that lolly Landorus but it is on plus two and it is going to be able to throw out some big damage. Moonblast into the Xerneas. Critical hit huge huge play there for your and able to take down the land risk before can throw out a plus two earthquake so it will take us to a game three and we are going to see your lead off with the town flame xerneas and luigi lead off with that land and tapu finney intimidates coming out all important onto that town flame on your own side of the field is a missed terrain set by that tapu finney on luigi's side we are going to see the tapu finney switch out straight away and are all going to come in cycle that intimidate all important onto that talent flame once again just a neuter its ability to do anything we're going to see the xerneas just protect this turn not take any damage as a taunt comes out into what was the tapu fini into the incineral stop it using any support options and the landorus Luigi pulling the trigger straight away here. Going to pull the trigger on this Tectonic Rage. Where's it going to be into? It's into that Xerneas, but it is minus one behind the Protect. So not going to be doing too much damage. And Xerneas brushes that off quite happily. Tanflame now switching out for Incineroar. Going to take this opportunity to get in, have that fake up pressure the next turn, and all importantly, get that Intimidate onto these two physical threats. Going to see Incineroar not want to stick around and type of Finny hit the field now as Xerneas goes for that Geomancy boost now. Taking this opportunity with both hands and setting up going into this next turn, especially with that fake out option that you've got with the Incineroar. You can do a lot of pressure as a uh, rock side comes out from the lander. It's not doing too much damage. Nice little bit of chip though. And lander is feeling very threatened going into this turn. It's going to retreat now. The Incineroar is going to hit the field for Luigi. So you see the Intimidate cycle onto the opposing Incineroar and Yorai not even taking the opportunity to go for that fake out. I'm going to just switch straight into Talon Flame now as a haze comes out from the Tapu Fini. And you've got to think maybe there you want to fake out the Tapu Fini and just get some damage while the opportunity is there before that haze comes out. But Yorai not taking that for an answer. He is going to go for that second Geomancy, two-turn Geomancy setup. So you see the Talent Flame now go for the taunt, prevent that Tapu Fini from being able to haze again as this Geomancy is now set up from the Xerneas. Putting itself right back in the first place that it was. We're going to see a Nature's Madness now come out from the Tapu Fini into the Xerneas. Take it down below 50% health. And a roar coming out from the Incineroar. He's got all the text Luigi to get rid of this Geomancy and really put the tide back in his favor. So we are going to go into this turn now as Incineroar switches out for Landorus to come back in again. Get intimidated onto both of these physical attackers on Urine's side of the field. Big play here as we see a Tailwind now set up from the Talon Flame, Boosting the speed on his side of the field with another Nature's Madness coming out from this type of finny what a great supporting role it is doing just throwing out these nature's madnesses heal pulsing its team and the light screen support was so imperative to how this match is playing out gonna see type of finny come out for your eye now as a talent flame retreats and the xerneas comes back out into the field for your eye and we're gonna see landris now retreat and incineral come out once again with that fake out support going into the next turn 
as we are going to see the type of finish. Just go for a heal pulse on your inside of the field and get all that nice health back for the Xerneas. As the Nature's Madness comes out now into the type of Finny on your inside of the field and the taunt wears off on Luigi's type of Finny. We're going to see a protect here from the Xerneas in the fake out into that slot with the Nature's Madness into that Incineroar. Just above berry range as the light screen does wear off. Now we're going to see a moon blast into the Tapu Fini slot. It's not quite enough. It does hang on. This Tapu Fini cannot be taken down easily. So it is able to see a light screen from Urine's Tapu Fini and a light screen from Luigi's side of the field. After that, Wiki Berry procking and a U turn coming out from the Landorus. Now you've got to imagine that the, uh, the Incineroar and the Landorus coming back in now. Just getting so confused. It is a complete revolving door of Pokemon here in this match. So we are going to see the Tailwind Pitter out now. For Urine as the Talon Flame now once again hits the field. Lander is setting up that sword stance boosting its attack stat by two stages as a Nature's Madness comes into that slot from the Tapu Fini and a Heal Pulse now coming out from the Tapu Fini on Luigi's side restoring and getting rid of all that damage from the Nature's Madness. And Tapu Fini going to switch out for Luigi and Cinero going to come in and get another Intimidate onto that Talon Flame now and really neutering its ability to do anything but we are going to see a Brave Bird it is thrown out and it looks like it is into that Incinero slot taking it down and taking a bit of resource for Luigi as a Rock Slide now returning and taking the Talon Flame down, not enough to take down the Tapu Fini on your inside of the field and just procking what is likely a Wiki Berry there and taking it above 50% health as a Haze comes out, gets rid of all of those boosts. Incineroar now coming out for Urine. His resources are depleted at this point in time. The Incineroar has not got a lot to go on. We are going to see the Intimidate come out from it onto that Landorus which is very important but we're probably going to see more switching around after this as the Landorus is faked out, stopping that turn as the Heal Pulse comes out from the Tapu Fini into the Incineroar. Nature's Madness avoiding the old big, big turn there as it now Sword Stands going into the next turn from the Landorus setting itself up once again. Nature's Madness into that slot as another Nature's Madness this time. No Heal Pulse coming out from the Tapu Fini into a Yorin Tapu Fini and a Flare Blitz. Is this enough? It is enough to take down the Landorus. That is a big play from Yorin getting rid of that huge threat on his side of the field but Xerneas now coming in in for Luigi and you've got to imagine that this Geomancy is going to be on the cards sooner or later. We're going to see a Moonblast straight into that type of Finny not wanting to set up this turn as the Nature's Madness now coming into that Incineroar taking it down below 50% health with a Snarl coming out from the Incineroar lowering the special attack and neutering the ability of that Geomancy somewhat. So the Xerneas on your inside of the field coming out now. Xerneas, Incineroar versus type of Finny, Xerneas. So what we're going to see? Who's going to come out victorious here? Protect from both Xerneas here. So you see a Haze come out from the type of Finny going to try and get rid of any boosts and especially that snarl boost as we do see it again into the Tapu Fini slot on Luigi's side of the field but not going to matter too much there. We are going to see the Geomancy boost now from Luigi. He's taking this moment gripping it by both hands. Going to get this special attack, special defense and speed boost on his side of the field and become very threatening here. You've got to think though that the snarl and potentially a uh, special attack drop here could really help him out but the, the, the heal pulse from that type of Finny that is surviving is huge. And the Snarl, it actually misses the Xerneas. That is devastating for Urine because the Xerneas now in such a big position to just start cutting through Urine's side of the field and take this victory in this first set today. This has been an incredible game. Heal Pulse coming out again and Moonblast gonna be the final piece of the puzzle for Luigi as he takes set one and that is incredible but we're going into game two Stu versus Johnny Hacks so this is going to be an incredible game both players having a great start to this circuit so we're going to see Stu lead off with the Ho-Oh Raichu and Johnny lead off with Incineroar Xerneas see that pressure on the Ho-Oh activate as the Intimidate comes out from the Incineroar on Johnny's side of the field we're going to see Johnny just withdraw the Xerneas and bring Lunala straight onto the field fake out into that slot not affected as a Brave Bird is coming out from the hole or and into that incinero as we do see a u-turn just pivoting and trying to get better ball position getting some nice damage onto that right here in the meantime is ludicolo now hitting the field for johnny we're going to see ludicolo switch straight back out incinero going to come back in with that intimidate support put that hot or all important down to minus two nuzzle coming out now going to break that shadow shield and paralyze the lunala on johnny's side of the field that's a big turn there for stew as a tailwind now set up from the hot or we're going to see Incineroar go for the fake out into the right to stop it going doing anything this turn as we are going to see a brave bird now from the hot or do some nice damage to the Lunala but on minus two it's not really affecting it too much as a tailwind now set up from that Lunala. Lunala going into the next turn is paralyzed as the right to now has the opportunity to nuzzle that Incineroar and take away any possibility of those tailwind benefits and knock off coming out into the hole going to knock off and reveal safety goggles on the hot or on Stu's side of the field now retreating and the Ferrothorn coming into the field and 
and a Volt Switch coming out from the right. You're going to reposition with Kyogre on the field. And because of these two paralyzed opponents on Johnny's side of the field, you've got to imagine this in this Kyogre now is putting on so much pressure for Stu. Sinnoh are going to switch out because of the pressure. Ludicolo going to come back in. Really enjoys the rain. Really enjoys being in front of Kyogre, but has to worry a little bit about this Ferrothorn. Water Spout going to come out from the Kyogre. Doing nice damage still. Four times resist as a Power Whip comes into that slot and misses. Unfortunate for Stu there. Kyogre now going to switch straight back out into the hole and put a lot more pressure onto that Ludicolo going to this next turn. See Lunala switch out and the Incineroar hit the field once again with that Intimidate support onto both these physical attackers on Stu's side of the field. Very important here as a Power Whip now coming out into that Ludicolo slot. Not quite enough and procking what looks like a 50% berry. Guav berry there putting the Ludicolo right back in fighting position. You're going to see the Kyogre come back onto the field for the Ferrothorn as Incineroar oh, is unfortunately paralyzed. You've got to think there you probably fake out into that hot or slot anyway but you see it is enough with the skull to take it down now the Raichu coming onto the field Lunala going to switch straight out for that Ludicolo protected from any nuzzles but the water spout going to be enough to take both targets down on Johnny's side of the field and Stu taking a little bit of an advantage here as the rain does stop Ludicolo now going to come back in for Johnny with that Xerneas now, and you've got to worry about this Raichu. It is faster than both these targets, as we see. Scarfed and uh, Kyogre throw out a big water spout, even out of rain, and a Volt Switch into that Ludicolo. Going to reposition with Ferrothorn now, and you've got to think with Ferrothorn and Ho-Ho in the back. Johnny is in a real tight spot. He is going for that Geomancy, trying to get some momentum going here, but without an answer to that Ferrothorn, it's going to be really hard to cut through Stu's side of the field going into the rest of this game. Let's see a Grass Knot now into the Kyogre from the Ludicolo, take it right down to 42 health as a Dazzling Gleam now coming out from this Xerneas. You really want Hidden Power Fire, but I doubt this Ludicolo has it. You can always hope for a freeze, but ah, uh, does not get it, and the Gyro Ball going to come out. Pick up the Knockout onto the Xerneas, and Stu looks like he's in a great position going into and be able Able to close out game one here. Volt switch now into the Ludicolo from the Raichu and picking up the win. So Stu going 1-0 up here as we go into game two now. Ludicolo Kyogre coming out for Stu as a lead with Lunala and Porygon Z coming out for Johnny. Big, big surprise here. Porygon Z not normally a Pokemon you see in this format, but got to be aware that this Ludicolo and Kyogre can still be very threatening, especially with that Swift Swim boost. We're going to see the Lunala just protect here as a Waltarium Z is going to be fired out from this Ludicolo. Which slot is it going to be into? You've got to imagine it might be in into the Lunala to break that Shadow Shield it is and then hopefully you're in a position to pick up the knockout with the Kyogre the next turn but because of that protect it is mean Lunala is going to stick around for this next turn. Ludicolo now switching out, Ferrothorn going to hit the field for Stu as we see a fake out into that Kyogre slot and the Lunala taking this opportunity to go for that Tailwind. Very important for Stu uh, Johnny going into these last few turns so we're going to see Ludicolo now switch out and Cineral hit the field now. Got to be a bit careful though switching in on the Kyogre in the rain especially if it sticks around we're going to see a side shock into that slot. Scald come out from the Kyogre and do some nice damage to Lunala and a Gyro Ball into that slot as well. Being able to pick up the knockout there. Porygon Z going to hit the field once again. Here we go. Kind of show what it's made of here. We are going to see the Z move from this Porygon Z. Is it going to be Conversion Z? It would be amazing if it is. And what type is it going to turn into? It is transforming into an electric type. We're going to see Scald into that Incineroar and take it down. It's going to be enough in the rain here to take down that Incineroar as a Leech Seed comes out from this Ferrothorn. Can the Porygon Porygon Z, boosted conversion boosted, be enough to take down and dent the rest of Stu's side of the field. We're going to see the Ludicolo come back in now. Kyogre going to switch out for the ho -Oh, which has a great time against this Ludicolo, even though it is raining. We're going to see an Ice Beam now doubling into that first Thorn slot, and the rain has stopped on the field as we see the Tailwinds pittering out. Thunderbolt now coming out from Porygon Z. Got to be more than enough to pick up the knockout on the hot or Johnny coming back in this match. He needs a burn here on this Ferrothorn to really moment carry momentum as we see a gyro ball not very effective though into that Porygon Z slot but the leech seed sapping away and really making it difficult for Johnny to get rid of that Pokemon on that side of the field see a fake out into the Porygon Z from the Ludicolo on Stu's side of the field as Scald coming out into this Ferrothorn and not getting the burn again he really needs that burn as a power whip gonna just take it down to about just about 50% health as the leech seed saps away even more Ludicolo now switching out again bringing in that Kyogre gonna get the rain up once again for you. The Ice Beam now coming out into this Ferrothorn. Doing some nice damage. Double up. Is the Freeze on the cards? No Freeze. And the Power Whip now just putting that Ludicolo into its berry uh, range and procking. Taking it back up to 50% health. But these Leech Seeds on 
Johnny's side of the field on not helping out. Uh, the Ferrothorn now protecting, and the Grass not coming out into Kyogre. We're going to pick up the knockout there. And the Ferrothorn just doing so much work here. You see, not being able to be taken down and just not having that fire type that you really need is really hindering Johnny's ability to get rid of it. Not Pokemon you see too often in this format, but it can work so well when played right. I'm going to see a, an Ice Beam again into this Ferrothorn. No freeze once again. Power up this time into the Ludicolo. Again, putting it down into range as we see the Leech Seed finally take down that Porygon Z and remove it from the field with that solely Ludicolo left. Can it pick up the freeze now? And uh, no, just procking a berry on the Ferrothorn. It looks like Stu is on a coaster to a win. So we'll just see the Grass Knot pick up the knockout onto the Ludicolo. And there we go. Stu taking that one. And what a great game. So we're going to our next one. It is going to be Light, which is Shade versus Krim. This is going to be a great match. So we're going to see Shade lead off with the Sogaleo Tapu Fini and Krim lead off with the Sogaleo Crobat here. The Tapu Fini summoning that Misty Terrain to the field. But switching out straight away and Zygog going to hit the field and proc that Misty Seed. Boosting that special defense by one stage. We're going to see a Super Fang from the Crobat but it does miss. And a Sunsteel Strike from the Sogaleo into the Zygog. Doing nice big damage. Taking it down just below 50% health and revealing the Life Orb there for Krim. We're going to see a Sunsteel Strike from Shade's side of the field into that Crobat and do about 50% damage as we now see the Power Construct ability activate on this Zygarde, get its complete form and a lot of HP back and it's going to start threatening everything on Krim's side of the field so he needs to adapt. We're going to see the Sogaleo switch out for the Serena here. It does protect as you see a taunt into that Sogaleo slot, stopping that trick. Really nice play there from Krim. Going for a Super Fang this time into the Zygarde and taking it down to about 25% health as the Sogaleo now going to pull out a big Z move. It's into the Serena and able to take it down. A huge play here for Shade, taking that big support option down from as a thousand arrows comes out into the Crobat from the Zygote, taking that down and leaving Krim with just his Kyogre and Sogaleo left. But cannot be underwritten because if this Kyogre is scarfed, or if it's probably faster than the Zygote, so it may be in range for a water spot to take it down. We're going to see the Toxicroak now hit the field for Shade as we see an extreme speed into the Kyogre and a water spot now into this Zygote. Is it going to be enough? It's not quite enough to take the knockout as a Sunsteel Strike now coming out from the Sogaleo and it is into that Toxicroak taking it down easy big hit there so Krim really coming back in this match is Tapu Fini now hitting the field for him you got to think that the extreme speed coming out it's not going to reduce the damage enough as a thunder this time coming out into that Tapu Fini taking it down to below 50% health a Sunsteel strike now coming out from Krim's Sogaleo coming back like a madman in this match and really picking up and tying up the sides here as we see the Sogaleo now come back out for Shade and can he set this trick room up this is a big thing we're going to see a protect from the Sogaleo on Shade side of the field water spout now no extreme speed this turn going to be enough to take down that Zygarde and it is two on one here as we go into this first game super power from the Sogaleo on Crim's side going to be able to just go into that protect we're going to see the Kyogre now protect super power into this Sogaleo and do some nice damage there as we see the Sogaleo go for a super power into that Kyogre. We are going to see the Sogaleo now protect this turn, trying to get around this water spout and stall out this rain is another superpower from Krim so there's the rain stopping and now here we go Krim pulling out the Waterium Z is this going to be enough to take down this Sogaleo you've got to think it is about 50% health just over that the rain's not up though so maybe it takes it maybe it doesn't and it is Krim taking game one huge huge game for Krim as we go into game two so we're going to see what adaptations both players make Zygarde and Cinero coming out for Shade here bring that Incineroar to this game after neglecting it in game one we are going to see the Intimidate not affect that Sogaleo but the Crobat um, as you see the Crobat switch straight out for the Serena here for Crim's side as the fake out comes out trying to prevent any damage with a superpower coming out into that Incineroar and picking up the big knockout turn one on that Incineroar big play there for Crim as he switches in that Queenly Majesty ability with the Serena to pick up that knockout Thousand Arrows now coming out from the Zygarde going to be able to do some nice damage to Sogaleo here as Shade switches in his Sogaleo now and Sogaleo on Krim's side of the field going to retreat as Crobat comes in for it. Thousand Hour is going to come out again from this Zygarde and put the Crobat on the ground as a knockoff comes out from this Serena. It's going to take away that Misty Seed as a Trick Room is now set up from the Sogaleo on Shade's side. I'm going to see the Serena just protect this turn as we do see another Thousand Arrows from the Zygarde. It's going to be into the Crobat and not quite take it down. It is able to survive but a Sunseal Strike going to be into that slot and able to pick up that, that knockout there which is a really nice play there from Shade pulling this match back 
even steven now as the Kyogre hits the field for Krim. We know from game one that this Kyogre is faster than this Ogolair. It's going to be faster than the Zygarde, but Zygarde not wanting to stick around as Toxicroak now hitting the field. And going to be in a nice position other than the Sogolair coming back onto the field for him. We're going to see a knockoff now into the Sogolair from the Serena. And that Z move once again. Which slot is it going to be into? It's going to be interesting to see if it is into the Sogolair slot on Krim's side of the field and it is takes down that big threat for the Toxicroak now Toxicroak has an easy time can take a number of attacks from this Serena and easily deals with the Kyogre so it's going to be very hard for Krim to come back in this one see the Assault Fist knocked off that Toxicroak now as it does take down the Serena with a Poison Jab Superpower coming out from the Sogaleo and doing some nice damage to Kyogre as it does go for a Thunder into this Toxicroak slot and take it down just below 50% health but with that Dry Skin ability going to be able to sap up some health in the meantime Zygarde going to switch back in for that Sogaleo on shade side as a low kick comes out thunder again from this Kyogre should be enough to pick up the knockout onto the Toxicroak but not quite enough hanging on there the dimensions turn back to normal and the game is over shade taking that one tying it up Going into game three, we're going to see Shade lead off with the Zygarde and Toxicroak and Krim lead off with the Crobat Sogaleo here. So no changes for Krim, a little bit of a change up for Shade as we see the Lou Collar switch out straight away for that Crobat and the fake out from the Toxicroak into that protecting the Sogaleo with a thousand hours following up from this Zygarde. It's not boosted on the special defensive side, got to worry about that Ice Beam from the Lou Collar but it is very threatened by that Toxicroak. Going to switch out though, Incineroar now going to hit the field, getting Intimidate and have that fake out support going in to the next turn just going to see a fake out from the Ludicolo into the Zygarde here and a Sunsteel strike now from the Sogaleo on Krim's side of the field where is it going to be into it's going to be into that Incineroar doing really nice damage again getting the chip with the, the life orb there but that extra power is incredible you see the Ludi now just switch out for the Crobat as Sogaleo protects on this side of the field you see a thousand hours come out from the Zygarde just constantly keeping up this pressure putting that Crobat on the ground now and the U-turn coming out from the Incineroar going to position itself and give Shade position to come back in with another fake out support with that toxic we're going to see a light a wide guard now from the sogaleo as a faker comes out into the sogaleo slot super fang now into the zygarde going to take it down to 50 percent health another throws an hours but blocked by that wide guard nice play there from krim really putting the questions in shade's mind whether he wants to continue going for those thousand hours or just to set up or position himself once again that power construct ability activating as sogaleo now switches in for the toxic croc and the protect coming out from the zygarde here as another wide God revealed from the Sogaleo as a Super Fang into that Zygarde slot once again. We are going to see a Super Fang once again from the Zygarde not keeping up, not dropping any momentum here as a Sunseal Strike. Is it going to be enough? It's going to be the double up into the Zygarde. It does pick up the knockout. That's a huge play from Krim getting rid of that big Pokemon there for him as a Trick Room now set up from the Sogaleo on shade side of the field with Incineroar now hitting the field. Getting the Intimidate again onto the Crobat but because of that full metal body ability on Sogaleo not going to affect it. We're going to see the Crobat switch out. Kyogre now hit the field for Krim and bring the rain with it. We are going to see Flare Blitz from this Incineroar now into the Sogaleo. Not quite enough to pick up the knockout there. So we do see it take some recoil damage and a Z move. It is going to be the signature Z move for Sogaleo. Which slot is it going to be into here? You've got to imagine it might be into. It's into the Sogaleo again, but not quite enough as a superpower into the Incineroar. Picking up the knockout there. The recoil damage though going to be enough to probably take down the Sogaleo on Krim side of the field, which it is. And it has done a lot of work, but then again, the problem is this Toxicroak once again for Krim to deal with. He's got three Pokemon left. He's got the Crobat that can't really damage it too much. You've got to get rid of this Assault Vest, but can you do it? But in this Trick Room and the Sogaleo throwing out big attacks every turn. Sunseal Strike into the Kyogre doing some nice damage. Dry Skin activating on the Toxicroak. We're going to see the Kyogre switch straight out now for the Crobat and a low kick come into that slot. Not very effective. Sunseal Strike now coming out from the Sogaleo. Going to be hitting into the Crobat slot doubling up into it and taking it down and really the lifeline there for the Kyogre to deal with this Toxicroak has really gone. Toxicroak going to be able to stroll through the rest of this game. Able to take down that Ludicolo and deal with the Kyogre pretty easily. You've got to think that Krim's last attempt is going to be Thunder Paralysis on this Toxicroak. Let's see a Poison Jab now into the Ludicolo slot. Pick up the knockout there before this Trick Room ends and now sealing the deal for Shade to take another win in this circuit and go forward with some incredible play here. The Thunder coming out from the Kyogre. Not not enough, no paralysis, the low kick and now another trick room which is going to seal it for shades. So very good game to both players as a low kick picks up the knockout on Kyogre.
We're not going to go on to our next game. It is going to be Will versus Zenefist Ace as we go on to this one today to kick us off. So exciting to see. We're going to see Volcarona and Xerneas come out for Will as Kyogre Ludicolo come out for Zenefist Ace. So Will straight away under a little bit of pressure from this super fast, hyper offensive lead from Zenefist Ace. Volcarona going to protect on the back of this and you see the Xerneas just protect to burn any fake outs here. We're going to see no fake out, just a Scald and a Water Spout come out from Zenefist Ace into both of these targets. But we are going to see the Volcarona now. Now switch the ground I'm going to come in and get rid of the rain get the Sun onto the field and reduce the attack power of these water type attacks We're going to see a scald into the Xerneas now and it's Geomancy revealing that the Kyogre is not scoffed and it is going to be slower than the Xerneas it has it got the Z move though that's the big question and has it went for it this turn if it's into the ground on it still does a nice bit of damage but this Geomancy on Wilsa the field really setting him up pretty nicely going into this next turn. Kyogre now going to protect on Xenophis Ace's side of the field. We see Moonblast into this Ludicolo. Going to take this opportunity to pick up the knockout there from Will as the Precipice Blades now coming out to the Kyogre. Got to think Xenophis Ace needs to switch out this Kyogre, get the rain back on the field and get it an advantage play. So we're going to see the Groudon now switch out for the Amoongus and the Origin Pulse coming out from this Kyogre. And I want to switch, just get some damage onto the field as it does get a critical hit onto the Xerneas as a Tailwind now setting up for this Kyogre and Xenophis is side of the field. Togetic just gonna protect here as we see another Dazzling Gleam. Will it be enough to pick up the Kyogre? It is unfortunately and will take a big big lead here in this match and we are going to see the Tapu Lele now come back in for Xenophis Ace. This is going to be his last two Pokemon here. Can he have enough in the tank to take down these two Pokemon? Here we're going to see the side Shot come out from the Tapu Lele. It's going to be into that Amoongus proccing that Papaya Berry, reducing the damage there as a Dazzling Gleam comes out and picks up the knockout onto the Togetic, taking that Tapu Lele down to really low health with a Spore being followed up from that Amoongus putting it to sleep and really taking the game for World Game 1 here as we go into Game 2. Can Xenophist just pull things round here and even this one up going into Game 2? We're going to see the Ludicolo and Togetic lead off for him and the Xerneas Volcarona lead again for Will. We're going to see the Volcarona go for a Tailwind after the Xerneas is faked out from that Ludicolo and the Togetic going to reply with a Tailwind of its own so there we go the Volcarona going to switch out Amoongus coming onto the field now for Will as the Togetic switching out as well with a Sogaleo now making an appearance putting a lot of pressure on the Xerneas but you've got to think that Amoongus is hindering your ability to hit it if you haven't got the safety goggles on that Sogaleo because of the Rage Powder is going to be protecting that Xerneas pretty well going into these next few turns going to see the Xerneas now throw a Geomancy up for Will going to get those boosts again onto his side of the field special attack special defense and speed with that power herb one turn turn boost up and a skull coming out into the Xerneas here not affected by that rage powder but picking up the burn and a Z move now coming out from Xenophis there it's going to be that Sogaleo getting the Z move signature Z move now and it is going to be into the Amoongus here and picking up the huge knockout taking away that support option for the Xerneas and the thing is though now with the Volcarona coming in it is going to be a great check to that Sogaleo but we are going to see the Togetic come back onto the field now Xenophis is really positioning himself very well we're going to see a Moonblast into that slot Togetic taking that attack with a Z move now coming out from the Volcarona the thing is though Xenophis has got the support network with that Togetic hanging on but the thing is with the Dazzling Gleam coming into it next turn it will remove it and give that Volcarona full range to take down the Sogaleo going into this next turn need Kyogre in the back and if he's got it you would think it's a good time to bring it in now but we are going to see he's just a follow me Dazzling Gleam come out pick up the knockout onto that Togetic and does open the door for this Volcarona to throw out an overheat it is going to be able to pick up the knockout onto this Sogaleo take it down and remove that one thing that could have really been able to remove the Xerneas on Will's side of the field going to see Ludicolo now and the Kyogre come out onto the field, bring the rain. These two are very threatening, but in front of a Xerneas Geomancy, it's not going to be enough, I don't think, at this point. Let's see Groudon now come in, overwrite the rain for Will. He is going to get that sun up onto the field as Xerneas protects his turn to burning. Fake out support coming out from Xenophis side of the field. Origin Pulse now coming out from Kyogre. Not wanting to throw out the, the water spout and a smart decision there. As you see the burn just tick over some damage with the Xerneas, and that is going to be games. So we are going to go into this next game. It's going to be a great one for us to go into next. It's going to be Pinko versus Worms Eye. Worms Eye on the top of your screen here. Going to lead off with the Ludicolo, Dustman, Necrozma, and Pinko lead off with the Ludicolo and Kyogre. The rain is on the field. Ludicolo is going crazy in this rain, enjoying it. Kyogre going to protect here as the fake out from the Ludicolo. Coming out into that Kyogre with a Z move coming out from Pinko straight away from his Ludicolo. Going to pin it into this Dustman, Necrozma. you got to imagine, is it going to be enough to pick up the knockout here? Dustman, Necrozma 
Pogonut very bulky, probably likely to hang on, and it does. Pogonut Citrus Berry and giving it room to set up a Trick Room now going into this next turn. But the Ludicolo is not really going to enjoy this. So Pingo side going to switch out, bringing his own Dustman across my Dustman on Worms I Sell the Field. Going to just protect this turn from any Skull damage as a Z move coming back out from Nigel's side. Return the favor with this Ludicolo now and going to pop it into which slot? It is going to be into that Kyogre slot. Actually, we're going to see the protect from the Kyogre now. As the Photon Geyser from the Dustman on Nigel's side into that slot. The Photon Geyser returning into the Ludicolo slot on Pinko's side of the field with the Scald returning and not picking up the burn there. Another Photon Geyser this time into that Ludi and picking up the knockout. So going down for Worm's Eye as a Photon Geyser now into the Kyogre. Not quite enough proccing a berry on Pinko's side of the field and getting all that nice health back with that Mago Berry. Scald coming out now into the Noz Cosma on Nigel's side. Gonna take it down and Pinko really making a big impact early on in this game. But Laurentis now coming onto the field for Nigel and you've got to think under these trick room conditions Laurentis is going to have a great time going to see a knock off into this Dustman across my proc a weakness policy now and dude, fire out a photon geyser it's going to be into that Kyogre plus two easily enough to pick up the knockout even though we do see the critical hit there the rain does stop and the dimensions do turn back to normal so this Laurentis is not going to have the best of time we're going to see protect here from the Laurentis as a scald into that slot and then another photon geyser there we are going to see the Laurentis just go for another protect as we see Nigel just fishing for as much information as possible and uh, we are going to see a photon geyser go for a the knockout there take down the Laurentis and Pinko take game one so we're going into game two here Nigel going to lead off with the Tapalele and the Ludicolo as we see Pinko lead off with the Tapalele and Ludicolo here we're going to see the Psychic Terrain activate on the field no fake outs going into this turn Psy Shock straight away into the Ludicolo on Nigel's side of the field and returned onto Pinko's so Grass not doubling into that slot taking the Ludicolo Color down here as we see Necrozma now hit the field and in a really nice position with this psychic terrain up. We're going to see Necrozma come out for Nigel as well as we see a side shock into the opposing Tapu Lele now. Do some really nice damage as a taunt comes out into this Dustman Necrozma. Going to prevent that trick room. Really, really ballsy player there from Nigel as we see another side shock into this Dustman Necrozma. Just preventing that trick room with your own Tapu Lele is very risky because of the threat that Necrozma has, but being able to deny the trick room is huge. We do eventually see Pinko pick up the knockout onto the Tabulele on Nigel's side of the field but it's kind of done its work stopping this trick room denying it so you see a Sunsteel strike into the Tabulele now and pick up the knockout there now Kyogre gonna hit the field for both players bring the rain with it who can take advantage of the rain the most going into these next turns and who wants the trick room set up we are gonna see Nigel throw out a big water spout it is gonna be doing a lot of damage to both Pokemon the Photon Geyser comes out into the Kyogre and picks up the knockout on Pinko's Kyogre and a Photon Geyser coming back out onto Nigel's. Not quite enough to pick up the win and Nigel tying up this set so we're going into game three here. So 1-1 one, one going into the final stages of the set. Nigel leading off again with that Tapu Lele and Ludicolo here. So you see Pinko lead off with the Laurentis and Ludicolo. Psyshock coming straight out into this Ludicolo. So you see a Grass not doubling into that slot once again taking down the Ludicolo so easily as a Leaf Blade comes out now into that Ludicolo and the Krosma takes its place on the field. Is that Taunt going to come out again from this Tapu Lele? So you see a Protect here as a Taunt does come out into that slot. Ice Beam now from the Ludicolo into that Laurentis do some nice damage is another leaf blade coming into it and taking it down going into this next turn we are going to see Necrozma come out for Nigel now and the taunt again from the Tapalele into the Dustman Necrozma we're going to see a photon geyser into the Laurentis slot pick up the knockout there this is a fast paced game for such slow bulky teams here we're going to see the Sunseal strike now come out from Pinko not going to go for the trick room here and just pick up um, the not the knockout hanging on with that focus slash the Tapalele and really pull himself back in the this game then now the Kyogre's out on the field for Pinko can he make the most of this we're gonna see a Photon Geyser now into that Tapu Lele that Focus Sash being so pivotal for Nigel here given another turn to attack so you see a Photon Geyser into the Protect on the Kyogre now
Kyogre coming out for Nigel here and the water spout revealed is not enough to pick up the knockout onto this Dustman across my skull coming out from the opposing Kyogre gonna proc that citrus berry give it all the health back photon guys in the psychic train enough to pick up the knockout on Pinko's Kyogre and the Dustman across my the only thing that's left Kyogre hanging on just barely but you've got to imagine now there's gonna be a bit too much for Pinko to do and Nigel has come out on top of this one photon guys are coming out picking up the knockout finally on Nigel Nigel's Kyogre but giving enough room for the Photon Geyser on Nigel's Dustman of Cosma to pick up the knockout on Pinko's. Not quite though, we're going to see it is very low health but not quite this turn and it probably will go down this turn with the Sunsteel Strike now coming out. This should be enough to pick up 8 HP of damage and win the game and Nigel taking the set. What a great win there for Nigel, propelling him right back in, especially with Pinko being in such top form now. We're going into the final match of today, this is going to be Hectic versus Pokemarty VGC, so Marty on the top of your screen, Hectic on the bottom. We're going to see Xerneas and Gengar come out for Hectic, as we see Incineroar and Tepafini come out for Marty here. We're going to see the Misty Terrain activating on the field from Marty's Tepafini as the Intimidate comes out from this Incineroar. Going to be really difficult here for the Xerneas to get set up in front of this fake out, as we see the Aveltal now hit the field for Marty, wanting to have something to deal with this Gengar as the Xerneas just protects this fake out from the Incineroar, as we see the Gengar go for a taunt into that type of Finny slot to stop any potential support but the Xerneas now able to do some damage as it is going to be able to set up the Geomancy but got to be a bit aware of the Evelta which is causing a big threat on, on Marty's side of the field. We're going to see the Geomancy now set up from this Xerneas as we see the Z Destiny Bond from this Gengar going to pull in all attacks from that side of the field. We are going to see the Geomancy set up procced now as the Evelta goes for a Snarl. Going to hit that double target not take down the Gengar though. Reduce the special attack on both targets on Pink and press inside of the field as we see a U-turn from the Incineroar. Going to waste that Z Destiny Bond, which is really nice for Martin. Not losing anything here as we see the type of thing now come out onto the field. Going to see it switch straight back up for the, the, the Incineroar now. Get that Intimidate again and get both dog types out onto the field as we see a Dazzling Gleam come out from the Xerneas and do some nice damage. Taunt again coming into that Incineroar as another Snarl comes out and gets rid of those Geomancy boosts on the Special Attack Spectrum for Preston. But the Curse Body activating normal Snarl for Marty. That's huge going into these next few turns. I'm going to see Serena come out now and protect from any fake out disruption here as a helping hand comes out from the Serena. It's going to be a Moonblast. Is this going to be enough into the Incineroar? It is enough. A critical hit and I think even without that probably would have been enough And the Oblivion Wing now coming into the Xerneas but because of that special defensive boost you're going to be able to take this quite comfortably. We're going to see the type of thing now hit the field for Marty as we do see another helping hand from this uh, Serena into the Xerneas, this time into the Veltal, and enough to pick up the knockout there, as we are going to see the type of Finny go for an Icy Wind. Got to think if Marty had his there, this would be the time to go for it, just to reduce those big defensive drop big boosts that the Xerneas has got on his side of the field. Now we're going to see Xerneas come out for Marty, it's going to activate that. It's just going to protect this turn as we see a Dazzling Gleam come out from Preston's Xerneas. It's going to do some nice damage to the type of Finny as it goes for the Haze this turn around. Power Whip now coming out, going to be able to take it down. And it is Xerneas on Marty's side of the field versus Z Serena and Xerneas on Preston's side with something in the back still to be unveiled. We're going to see the Geomancy come out from Marty now, get those boosts on his side, proc that power herb, and get that one turn power up. But is it a bit too late to cut through everything on Preston's side of the field? We're going to see the power whip miss after a Moonblast from the Xerneas. Xerneas now protecting Preston's side of the field as the Moonblast comes out from Marty, picking up a nice big knockout onto the Serena. Really good predict there as the Incineroar now coming out for Preston. You've got to think now with this fake out support. It's going to be enough to maybe get Preston Xerneas boosted up once more. We're going to see the fake out on that side of the field. Geomancy and Preston going for this Geomancy boost here as he is going to be able to hopefully take a Moonblast this next turn. Moonblast coming out from Marty's Xerneas. Going to pick up the knockout there and the Flare Blitz coming out from the Incineroar. Going to do some nice damage. Take it down just below 40% health as a Moonblast now coming out from Marty's Xerneas. Going to be able to just... Oh, it's not quite enough to pick up the knockout. Just procking that Aguave Berry here. It's another Flare Blitz. It's going to be fired out from Preston and picking up the knockout huge knockout there Preston able to take down the Xerneas and take game one so we'll go straight into game two and can Marty readjust he was in such a nice position going to the last stage of that match Preston coming out right at the end with that big KO onto the Xerneas and it's going to see Groudon Venusaur lead out for Preston here and a Veltal and Incineroar lead out for Marty we're going to see the Venusaur switch straight out because of that fake out pressure and the Queenly Majesty hit the field to get around that fake out pressure from the Xerneas from the Incineroar here fake out 
out into the Groudon, but blocked as a Stone Edge comes out into that Cortana Dune. Some nice damage, critical hit, and revealing the life orb there. Cortana going to retreat straight away. Going to have that Evelto come back onto the field as soon as possible as Incineroar switches out as well. With Landorus now hitting the field for Marty. Going to get that double Intimidate onto both of these targets here. With the Helping Hand now coming out from the Groudon. It's going to throw out a Precipice Blades, but both these flying types are not worried about this at all. Groudon switching out. Venusaur coming back onto the field. What we're going to see is Sword Stance from the Landorus now, boosting its attack stat by two stages with an Oblivion Wing into that Serena and doing some nice damage, taking it down to 50% health with a U-turn coming out from the Serena. Now going to be an opportunity for Preston to get the Xerneas onto the field and start pressuring here, especially with that Venusaur next to it. Sleep Powder is something that you can utilize, but a Grass Knot is all he's going for. Grass Knot and Moonblast into that slot, able to take down the Landorus. Big turn here for Preston and a Snarl coming out to negate any Geomancy boost. Reduce the special attack on both of these special attackers on Preston's side of the field. Cortana now going to hit the field for Marty as the Cortana switches straight back out and the Incineroar coming back onto the field. Really in a tight position if this Xerneas gets hit up now. Hidden Power Fire going to be revealed on Preston's Venusaur to deal with that Cortana as a Geomancy now coming out for the Xerneas and get these boosts. One turn set up with this Power Herb boosting that special attack, special defense and speed as we go into this next turn with an Oblivion Wing now coming out into the Venusaur it is not quite enough to pick up the knockout. The Venusaur actually hanging on there. We do see a protect from the Xerneas going into this next turn as a Sleep Powder does come out into the Incineroar and put the Incineroar to sleep. Snarl now coming out from the Uvelto going to be enough to pick up the knockout onto this Venusaur but the Xerneas is in such a dominating position now going to this next one with the Serena now coming out onto the field with this Helping Hand boost. It's going to be cutting through anything with a Moonblast of Dazzling Gleam from this Xerneas on Preston's side of the field. We are going to see that Helping Hand. We're going to see a Moonblast is going to be enough to take down this Eveltal, unfortunately. And things look a little bit tricky for Marty to come back, especially with this Incineroar sleeping and this Cortana on half, just over half health. We're going to see a Faint come into the Cortana just in case there's a Protect comes out there with a the Moonblast following up into that slot. And with the Groudon lurking in the back, it doesn't look like there's a way back for Marty in this game with the Incineroar just snoozing out on the field. Moonblast now coming out from the Xerneas. It's going to take it down to around 25%. Their U-turn procking the berry on the Incineroar and paving the way for this Groudon to come back in. In. But if this Incineroar can wake up now, it's going to be sun boosted. It's going to be able to flare blitz into the Xerneas, maybe, but stays asleep. And even if that was the case, Groudon going to be able to just clean up pretty easily with the Precipice Blades and Preston taking a commanding victory here against Marty. So incredible, incredible show from all of our players here. So just to recap the results going into the end of week six, we've got Luigi beating Urine 2 1. We've got Johnny losing 2 0 to Stu. We've got Shade beating Krim 2 1. Xenophis Deus losing 2-0 to Will, you've got Pinko losing 2-1 to Nigel, and Poker Marty losing 2-0 to Hectic. So some incredible results. We've had two matches that haven't been played yet. It's a little bit delay in those matches, but we will feature those at another point in one of the following weeks on these episodes. So with the results revealed, we can go and have a look at the league table here. As we can see, Luigi is taking head of Steamy as top of the leaderboard, tied with the Stew there on. 16 points apiece. Uh, Pinko down in third place, Shade in fourth with a game in hand, remember. Then you got Worm's Eye in fifth, Will in sixth, Johnny in seventh, Amaji in eighth with a game in hand, you've got to remember. Krim in ninth, Pokemon in tenth, Hectic in eleventh, you've got Alex in twelfth. 12th place, you've got Johnny Yorine in 13th, Purple in 14th, a lot of games in hand, remember Purple has got a lot of games to play in this circuit to catch up with the others, Bevan down in 15th, again he's got quite a few games to catch up on and then Xenophis is down in 16th, so they're the league tables and that is that for week 6, what an incredible bunch of games we've had today, a lot of mirror matches as well, so really tough revolving games, board positioning, very strategically played but massive problems to every single player let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are guys of the episode this week if you've got a favorite game if you've got a favorite player a player that you're following you want to do really well let us know down in the comment section below i'd love to hear your thoughts on what the games were like and um, remember we will be doing a circuit for the ultra series so information regarding that will be
will be coming out very soon so if you'd like to get involved make sure you do subscribe to the channel so you get all the news as and when it comes out for the Ultra Series and signing up for that. But we're going to wrap things up there guys. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. A massive congratulations to all our players. Big thank you to all our players as well and we will be back for another episode next week. So until then guys take care of yourselves and bye bye.